I'm Priscilla Barrera with the Investing News Network, and here with me today is Andy Leyland, Head of Forecasting at Benchmark Mineral Intelligence. Andy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's great to be here. All right. So to start, can you let us know what your role is at Benchmark and a little bit about your background? Sure. Well, I've been a commodities analyst for about 15 years now, a mixture of time as a, an analyst at investment banks and as a consultant at research firms. In Benchmark Minerals, I head up our forecasting department and also our consultancy department. So this is looking at single client pieces of work focused on the battery raw material supply chain. And also we maintain a range of supply demand, cost models, forecast reports on uh, the key battery raw material markets. Right. And um, then let's talk about prices. Can you share some of the factors that you think will drive lithium prices in the next two years? and in the long term? Yeah, I mean, there, there are a number of factors that are really material to the market in determining the supply-demand balance. I think with lithium, what you've seen this year is quite a bit of negativity creep into the market, worries about oversupply in the market. But effectively, they don't take into account a number of factors. One is that there's still not enough conversion capacity for spodumene in China. In a recent trip we made there, a lot of the plants which have announced nameplate capacity simply don't exist, aren't finished, aren't operating, or what don't have the capacity or aren't producing battery grade material. So that's why the market is still tight when people thought we were going into oversupply this year. Um, we have seen some softness in prices. The expectation is the Chinese market will pick up a little bit in the second half of the year. And again, we'll see prices maintained at a reasonably comfortable level. For us, we don't see any return to prices in the six, seven, eight thousand dollar per ton level. All right. One of the big discussions regarding prices is whether carbonate and hydroxide prices will converge in the next few years. What is the current state of prices, and what do you forecast will happen going forward? Yeah, I mean, it's a, a great question, and there has been a lot of talk around that. Um, from a production cost point of view, you would, in the long term, expect some convergence of the market. However, what you're seeing at the moment is a lot more demand for lithium hydroxide in the immediate future, lithium hydroxide that can go into batteries. And that's because you've seen a move towards higher nickel cathode material, and that requires more lithium hydroxide. You're also seeing a tightening of the specifications for all lithium products going into batteries. And this is combining with when you have more types of lithium coming onto the market, which still aren't certified by the end users. So again, this is just extending the tightness in the market. And that tightness is, is more on the hydroxide than the carbonate side. Right. And looking over to demand for raw materials, can you talk about what you forecast um, for lithium demand in the next few years? Yeah, we, um, we have a, a supply demand model that allows you to, to run your own sensitivity analysis on a number of factors. Um, that flows through from a bottom-up analysis of electric vehicle demand, cathode chemistry demand, what we view happening in, in stationary storage. Ultimately, we expect a, a quadrupling of supply and demand over the 2025 period. Um, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but... It, you know, it's, it's still a very positive story. Right, and um, what about other raw materials such as cobalt and nickel? Yeah, again, it's uh, you've seen a huge amount of interest in the market because the prices have, have been quite high, particularly in cobalt. There are still worries about <coughs> shortages, not so much now for the next two to three years, but in the long term, um, you still have structural deficits appearing in lithium, in cobalt, and the big worries now from talking to a lot of the OEMs and battery manufacturers this week is class one nickel um, because there's a shortage of this material pending and actually high spec graphite for anodes. Again, they're the two commodities that are keeping people awake at the moment. All right. And um, according to your forecast, do you expect the lithium market to remain balanced in the next few years, or will we see a surplus? It's a really good question, and this is something that a lot of the industry doesn't understand. They model the industry based on a lithium carbonate equivalent basis, 
and it looks like the market would be going into oversupply. But a lot of what they've actually modelled is volume in production, and as I said earlier, that is not going into oversupply as quickly as people thought because there isn't the conversion capacity, and then you have issues of quality and certification which keep the market quite tight. What you will see is perhaps some pressure on spodumin, then perhaps some pressure on carbonate, and then perhaps some pressure on hydroxide in that order. But it's what's really important to understand is that moving into an oversupply situation isn't necessarily bad for prices in these markets. These markets can't afford for prices to fall back to a cash cost level because most of the supply is not depreciated. They have very high capital repayments in their first years of production. So actually the level of price support in the market is a lot higher than you would normally expect in a commodity market. And then even if you are in a position of oversupply, you still need to double triple capacity in the coming years, so you still need to invest. So it's not just even your total costs with your capital repayments, you need an incentive price to, to continue to expand. So our view is actually that you can have oversupply in this market and still have uh, historically high price levels. Great. And um, we heard a lot of talk about changes in chemistry in batteries. In your opinion, what battery raw material is the next one to watch and why? Uh, the next one to watch is definitely nickel. Um, nickel is about a 2.2 million ton market and the battery demand from that side is relatively small, but it is growing very, very quickly. Because you've seen this substitution away from cobalt towards um, higher energy density batteries using more nickel, you would have heard a lot about the different 811 chemistry, um, cathode chemistry and moved there. This has a huge impact on nickel, it means that it is growing faster than the market and looking at the numbers as how much nickel will be consumed by batteries in say seven years time we have that number close to 400,000 tons. There is that much nickel in existence that can fill that gap but it has to come out of the stainless steel market um, and this is a big concern for people because not all nickel at the moment is is capable of being processed economically into uh, a battery consumable product. What about recycling of raw materials? What are your thoughts and will it significantly impact the market in the future? Yeah, recycling is, is one of the seven or eight factors that we've seen as having a huge material impact on the market as we, we develop and as this supply chain builds out. The, the real question there is, when does this recycled material enter the market? Well, this obviously depends on the end of life of a lithium-ion battery. Now, the end of the life of the lithium-ion battery, we don't know how long the charge rates will last in the vehicles because we don't know the driving conditions. Um, you know, the driving conditions for electric vehicles in Hong Kong is very different to how it is in, in California, and you actually have very different uh, levels of degradation between different environments and different styles of driving. You then have, when the, the life cycle of the, the battery starts to degrade, is that battery replaced and recycled, or is it used in off-grid storage, where that issue isn't, isn't as important? And then you have the economics of, are people getting the battery for the cobalt? Do they not care so much about the lithium? Is the lithium that they're processing of battery grade or of a technical grade? And the real worry of all of this is, that side of the market can be built in 24 months. So mine, seven years, recycling, 18, 24 months, and that's how quickly this, this big amount of new supply could or could not come onto the market. So my last question for you today, it seems more and more the question is about what will happen with raw materials after 2030s, uh, when the market might start shifting to new technologies that could replace the current lithium-ion batteries. Does your forecast analysis go beyond 2025, and does it include some of these potential technologies? Why or why not? That's a great question. And, you know, we've, we've had a few meetings this week where everybody said, why, why is the focus on 2025? Why does the world end on 2025? Um, that, you know, that's only the, you know, the market starts getting exciting when the growth rates really pick up. And, you know, all of our models go to 2040 so that people can look at the life cycle of an investment and work out the, the MPVs for that investment. In terms of the technological change, 
we view lithium ion chemistries as continuing to dominate in electric vehicles probably throughout the forecast period just because of the chemical properties of lithium and people would say there's not much more efficiency you can gain but the market's always been able to surprise on the upside there's still a lot that can be done with the the battery pack side of the market there's probably too much focus on purely on the cell at the moment in terms of other technologies we are relatively conservative in our forecast for how much lithium iron will be used in off-grid storage and that's because you don't have weight and you don't have size as factors in determining this so lithium iron loses its advantage against other technologies at the moment it's being used because it's the only one that is commercially deployed and it's being you know used very successfully in a number of high profile um, off-grid storage batteries but there is a, an opportunity in the market some years for now that lithium iron won't dominate the question is what what technology will and no one knows that answer all right andy thank you so much for joining us today thank you